tell us a fucking joke. <laughs> and then I woke up and I was in recovery. So that's, yeah, like seven years ago. Yeah, I'm not dead. I'm happy you're not dead. Hey, Alfred, you said you're sober. How many years you got? Two. Two? I got eight. Yeah. I got eight. And, and this is the thing. When you don't drink, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but when you do drink, do you know how easy it is to get laced? <laughs> you just gotta walk up to a stranger at a bar and be like, hey, I'm cute, you're cute, let's have some drinks, let's have some shots, let's party, and see what we wake up in the morning. But when you don't drink, you can't just walk up to somebody at a bar and be like, hey, I think you're cute, why don't you have some drinks, why don't you have some shots, and see where you wake up in the morning. <laughs> Because that does come off very Bill Cosby, you know? <laughs> no, you know what you have to do when you don't drink, you gotta get late, you gotta be witty and charming and personable and engaging. And you have to have the fucking balls to look somebody dead in the eye and say, are we gonna fuck later? <laughs> or should I eat the rest of this burrito? <laughs> and uh, I met a lady and a, uh, cause like, I'm an Alcoholics Anonymous, not Narcotics Anonymous, cause I still smoke weed, right? And no, no, they fucking hate each other, it's like Bloods and Crips shit, it's ridiculous. And like, I'll go to these things, they're like, you still smoke weed, Jimmy, you're not clean, you're not clean, Jimmy, you still smoke weed, you're not clean, Jimmy, you still smoke weed. And I'm just like, you know what, bro? You are very judgmental for somebody who used to suck paper crank. <laughs> So I met a lady at one of these events, and she came up to me, she's like, you know, Jim, you don't understand addiction. An addict has a big, fat, and emotional hole inside of them that they try to fill with drugs and booze, and more drugs and more booze, and more drugs and more booze, until eventually they realize that they're gonna kill themselves unless they fix themselves. And then she looked me dead in the eye and said, my new addiction is dick. <laughs> and I was like, what an awesome way to fill up that hole. <laughs> Can you imagine how she comes on strung out on dick and she's in some alley somewhere sucking dick to get more dick? <laughs> That's a rock bottom moment, you know what I mean? Like, I thought I had a rock bottom moment that was pretty bad. And no, I did not suck any dick. Um, no, I was trying to get high in San Francisco, right? And I could not get the fucking bowl. It was so windy. And I was like in the nastiest neighborhood in the city. And there's this little like nook that was like a chain link fence and the wall of a building. There's like all this garbage, and, like all this fucking like bum shit, and, like all this gross needles and cigarette butts everywhere. And I kind of like dumped down this alley to try and get the bullet, thinking it would block the wind, and I couldn't get it. And I took like another step, and I like saw that there's a pile of bum shit with a cigarette put out in it. And I was like, I am not going any further, right? So I'm trying to get this bullet, and I could not get it lit. And I find myself just cuffing it and facing the wind and getting lower and lower and lower and lower. And I remember that pile of bunk shit's like right here. And I'm like, man, is this rock bottom? I'm fucking trying to get high in the tenderloin like a fucking nasty, disgusting hobo. And I'm just, you know what I mean? Like my blonde hair, my dirty, hippie, nasty fucking comedy clothes. And I'm just, oh. <laughs> And they say that when an addict has a moment of clarity, they see themselves from a third person perspective. And for the briefest moment, I saw myself from the sidewalk, down the alley, looking like any other piece of shit in a tenderloin, and it disgusted me. And next thing I know, I was back in my own person. And I looked a little farther down, and I noticed that there's a guy with his pants around his ankles and a needle sticking out of his neck. And he's pissing up, straight up into the air, back down onto his own chest. And I was like, that's rock bottom. <laughs> And that's the story about the time I almost had to quit smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs>